Welcome to Greenpeace. <laughs> is fit it with some teaspoons and tea bags. <laughs> That sort of thing that's really it. annoys me. We should do a car that's quintessentially German. Well, just replace the spoons with little sausages. In no, no. <laughs> Give it trafficators that go like that. <laughs> <laughs> a sat nav that only goes to Poland. <laughs> Look, yeah. I'm fine. The fan belts have been lost for thousands of years. <laughs> no, I don't think so. New uh, motoring website come out. It's, uh, it's for homosexuals. Uh, <laughs> it's a motoring site for homosexuals. Do you know what they've called it? Top no, not Top Quiz. <laughs> so that's very good. Very good. That's better than what they've come up with. That is actually better. They've actually called it, we've got it here, Top Gayer. <laughs> I like Top Queer more. Yeah. Well, set up a rival one. The best thing about this, okay, because I went and checked this one out, and uh, yeah, the editor is called Rich. Oh, come on, it's not. <laughs> no, he's put a, he's put a CV thing. of himself in, and he says he lives in the Cotswolds. Well, yeah, I do. He's got a 4x4. Four four. Yes, I have, but uh, look, I'm not moonlighting as the editor of a gay website, okay? <laughs> he's got a dog. Yes, I've got. Look, it's not me. He's had his teeth whitened. I haven't. I... <laughs> I've not had my teeth whitened. What, they've just become white? In the same way that yours have gone green. It's <laughs> <laughs> so far, it's to... taken him three and a half minutes to go from naught to 60. And he hasn't actually oh. technically left naught yet. EDC Sport, DSC in M Dynamic mode, SMG Drive Logic S, but with five or six. Right, I've done it. It's gone foggy. Look at that. He's sweet! Look at him, he's like a dog, only with no legs. Do you reckon the BM's cool? No. No. It's too nerdy. nerdy. No, I was thinking, it honestly, is. I think that there's a coolness. You just have that sense that anyone who knows about cars will go, that's an M6, that's very cool. Yeah, you'll get a sort of a knowing nod, won't you? <laughs> Eat my fish! Uh, I'm going to start at the bottom, that's more interesting. Uh, so, uh, third from bottom, in 157th place, from France, it's the Renault Espace. Yay. OK, uh, second from bottom, from France, it's the Peugeot 307. Yay. And in last place, the least satisfying car that you can own, from France, the Peugeot 807. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it is. Well, I don't clap. I really wouldn't clap. Obviously, we did contact Peugeot, and, you know, they were going to send one to us, but then we think they must have guessed why we wanted one here, and they said, no, overnight it had an accident. Yeah. James, you Hammond wasn't the only one turning nasty. The weather was, too. The BMW went first. <laughs> And what's he listening to in there? Ah, the Bee Gees, of course, who were all born on the Isle of Man. Do you think he can see anything up there? He doesn't see like we see. Really? He doesn't see the fog, he just has numbers coming up in green. Oh, like scrolling. At least James's umbrella's working. Oh, thank goodness. Are you oh, sorry, yeah, you're... <laughs> now, I should explain at the outset that this car is rubbish. I'm afraid. Terrible. There are many things I'd rather be doing than driving it, including waiting for Bernard Manning to come off the stage in a sweaty nightclub and then licking his back clean. Sorry, I'm really only saying this because the director who's shooting the film today has actually ordered a Coxter as a sort of investment. His little face, he's so worried. He's so worried I'm going to be mean about it. The back's just too long. Looks like a kangaroo. And I'm sorry, but if you're going to have one of these things, you really... <laughs> oh, uh, oh, director's not very pleased with you, is he? No, but I've got no time for people who buy cars as an investment, hoping that there'll be a waiting list. There's not going to be a waiting list for that, is there, after that? No, after that film, probably not. And there's another thing as well, is he ordered his without satellite navigation. Who's going to buy a £50,000 car that doesn't have sat-nav on it? And, uh, do you know why he ordered it without sat-nav? Because he's an idiot? No, it's because that's what I told him to do. <laughs> 
So between us then, we've pretty much ruined him, and that means he's going to end up driving it himself, and that's going to be even worse. Oh. These, these tyres, they say, if you spin them, will emit coloured smoke. <laughs> Yeah, now the thing was, is that this morning, to test this out, we bolted some of those tyres to the back of a TBR, put the stig in it, and this is what happened. There he is, look, and away he goes. Oh, look! Oh, hey! Now, we are told... That's like a red arrow. It is. We are told that these tyres do affect handling and performance somewhat, and braking. <laughs> oh, yeah, but what a way to arrive at work. Yeah, look, look at the stick. He's, he's sort of enjoying himself in there, is he? Look at him. <laughs> That's a happy stick. I'm a red arrow, I'm not a stick. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> But even though it's got the 1950s heritage, it shouldn't have the 1950s headaches. So underneath this Brill Cream and Bill Haley exterior, it's got a Jag XJS V12. It's got Jag suspension, and it's got brakes that aren't made out of old nylons and bits of mesh stick. I mean, yeah, it's a bit twitchy around the back end, but six litre V12 on the car weighs less than a ton. Come on, what do you expect? It's loud, it's brutal, it's mad! Ah! Push the tempo, push the tempo. Here she goes. Will she clear the carav... No. Never mind. Maybe James will clear... No. If you look, it is a Vauxhall Astra VXR. Here it comes, <laughs> moving towards us now. And uh, if you just watch carefully, you'll note that uh, it has now taken off. <laughs> it is flying. It's floating. No, it's not floating, James. It's flying. And there were no wires either. Before you say that, it has no wires suspending it. There is a man controlling that <laughs> with a radio control thing. Amazing! I know that trying to average 30 miles an hour doesn't sound like much, but on roads like this, trust me, it's a tall order. Mind you, the climbers had an even bigger problem. They were going up with no safety ropes. Really thinks he's going to climb up there faster than I can get this to the top. One fifty-seven. I reckon we've got him, mate. Come on. Woo! Yes. I don't believe that. So that was what, one hour? 57. You climbed that in 157? <laughs> Not even out of breath. And I was what, two hours, three? You guys. This probably isn't entirely typical of the sort of lunch your average Zonda owner sits down to. I bought him a present. What is oh, it? Yeah. It's a baseball Perfect. cap, James. Yeah. Keep your hair in check. Yeah. Yeah. Got, just have it at a jaunty angle, like a school cap. Top Gear, this pokey motoring show on yes. BBC Two, this week, one, I've got it here, <laughs> in New York, an Emmy! We did! We won an Emmy! That is an Emmy. Yeah. What this is for, OK, it's for the best non-scripted entertainment show that wasn't made in America. Yes, That's indeed. us. <laughs> Why didn't you go to the ceremony to pick that up? Well, because I was writing the script for you this did. week's show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The thing is, 
is, though, when The Office, you remember the sitcom series thing, when that won some Golden Globes recently, yeah. the whole of the BBC ground to a halt whilst everyone said congratulations, and they were showered with, like, gifts and gold and diamonds were, the and The director-general of the BBC spent a week rubbing warm pig fat into Ricky Gervais. Yes, he did. <laughs> he did. He did. So... How many chocolate-covered lap dancers do you think have been sent to us? How many do you reckon? Not a damn thing. Nothing! <laughs> but if you think that's outrageous, then please write to us, as of Monday, to Top Gear, Channel 4 Television, yes, yes. <laughs> 124 Horsbury Road, London, SW1. It measures the wheel horsepower and then by letting it run down it converts the mechanical drag into the extra horsepower of the flywheel. Good. For centuries the Portuguese have struck fear into the hearts of sardines everywhere. But now it's payback time. Because we're going to cause a bit of mayhem on the streets of Lisbon. We're off. Alright, tricky hairpin. Bollocks, I think I might have just clipped Lisbon. Come on. Sorry. Now the kid is breathing down my neck. When the roads opened out just a bit, the Clio was very good, very nippy. And fast. Come on, come on, come on. But what I didn't realise was just what a nutter the cyclist could be. Both at sea level, with just a few hundred meters to go. Main road. Come on, come on. He's there. He'd beaten me by ten seconds. Well done, sir. Permission to say, oh cock, on BBC Two. Forty years, men with pencils behind their ears turned out Marcos sports and race cars. Until four years ago, when the company went bust and shut up shop, as seen in this dramatic reconstruction. This vehicle runs on diesel fuel. <laughs> Every time you open the fuel filler. Every time you do it. How much do you want this broadcasting across a petrol forecourt? <laughs> no, you don't. I mean, I'm a tight one. I've got a diesel. That'll be me. Does it go on? It didn't even opt for leather. It's a cheap, awful. Oh, that's ridiculous. Anyway. That'll drive you insane. Diesel fuel. Insert diesel fuel only. Entertain yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've made it, you've made it angry. <laughs> Shut up! Shut it! Shut up! Does it, 
Does it come with the mallet? <laughs> well, well, that's part of it. It would be Captain Captain Slow and his Hammond hand luggage in a private plane versus me in a car. And we would be racing from Alba, which is here, just south of Turin in northern Italy, to a restaurant on top of the NatWest Tower here in London. Now sit back, because this is a good one. <laughs> I think this modern obsession with horsepower is absolutely idiotic. A simple, light, well-sorted classic will be more than a match for some youth car with 5,000 horsepower and a big stereo. Yes, and I think the opposite. So the only way to settle this is with a duel. And that duel will take place here, at the famous Prescott Hill Climb course in Gloucestershire. It's one of the most prestigious tracks in Britain, the motor racing equivalent of Vera Lynn. Over the years, its corners have been tackled by the likes of Sterling Moss, Peter Collins and Graham Hill. So what in the name of all that's holy would the ghosts of Collins and Hill make of this lot? And here comes my car now. I'm sort of guessing that's not your kind of thing. No. No, no not no. at all. What colour is that? Yeah. National Health Service hey. Green, I suspect. <laughs> if we had a heavy snow, it would go for clear in that, wouldn't it? Behold the majesty of the Austin Healy, <laughs> which is stalled. This is a 1961 Frog Eye Sprite. That's what you've got to be. Uh, Marvellous. Does it go any lower than that? Or is that it? No, it's the suspension doesn't move, it's fixed. Ah. Okay. okay. Old it's kind of old exactly, old fashioned. Yeah. In this battle of arthritis against yeah. acne, it's Hammond's group who have the power advantage. Yeah. That's a 3 litre V6 at roughly about 200 brake. That's probably about five times what he's got over there. Possibly. <laughs> but what do you reckon not 60 times? About 6.2 reckon. Oh, that's fine. In fact, you've probably got a more powerful stereo than he has. Car. By contrast, the geriatric Healy sports a modest 130 horsepower, almost 100 less than the Peugeot. What about the top speed? Well, again, the gearing would probably bring that down to about 95. That's not so good, to be honest. And the classic car boys were worried about the fearsome brakes on the max power car. Still, we didn't win two world wars by standing around moaning. What a completely convincing start, do you mind me saying that? Sounds good. Sounds great. Sure enough, it was quick on the straights, but this mobile Halfords paid the price on the corners. <laughs> Sort of a bit Jamie yeah, Bond yeah, film, yeah, isn't yeah. it? That weight makes it, it really did leap away. Yes, this isn't the coolest the Stiggers ever looked, but in the Healy, he was in good shape through the corner. <laughs> Oh, oh, getting close. The Healy blitzed the last two turns, but would it be 59.26? Yes, the Beards had won it by a whisker. <laughs> Age, experience, tweed and a little bit of facial hair is what it takes to win at hill climbing. Right, I know which one I'd rather go home in, the one with the roof and the windscreen. <laughs> the Top Gear Award for the biggest surprise of the year. Number of uh, options for us, but we're starting with this. It's James, and as you can see, he is running and he is on television. Yes, that actually happened. That did that briefly, happened. but it happened. Bigger than that, though, was Jeremy receiving a pie in the face. Oh. <laughs> Certainly, that was a surprise for me. It was. I have to be honest. Uh, but despite her size, I mean, she was like a gazelle, yeah. that girl. <laughs> and we'll move it on to the ugliest car of the year. And the nominations are the Sanyong Chiron, 
Oh. The Sanyong Rodius. Now look at this one, the Sanyong Muso. Oh, man. <laughs> that really is a moose, that thing, isn't it? <laughs> Ow. The Gas Guzzler of the Year. The nominations are the Range Rover Sport, which achieved eight miles to the gallon. The Bugatti Veyron, which achieved four miles to the gallon. And Hemel Hempstead. <laughs> That actually used up 60 million gallons of fuel, didn't move an inch. <laughs> now, every year, this prestigious and coveted golden cock <laughs> is awarded to the presenter who makes the biggest hash of something in the year. Last year, I got it uh, for leaving uh, a, the, a Land Rover Discovery and a film crew on the top of a Scottish mountain and going home with the keys in my pocket. <laughs> this year, though, it's awarded... To James. Yes, it is, because, you see, the thing is, the other week we had to record a short trail, the three of us, and James was mysteriously reluctant to appear on camera. Where's he just been? Right, I've been for a slash. Oh, he's going to dribble! <laughs> no, no, I'm going to dribble. Oh, yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> let's stand up and do this, Lee. Right no, well, I think we should. Let's stand, Brian. Yeah, let's do it standing. It's much better. So, full load shots. Like yeah. <laughs> There we go. James, are you not, are you not coming in? To, you may as well. Check out here. the dryness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, if you have a weakness on this show, you die. <laughs> <laughs>